Well, Tai Chi has eight principles that are called, but this more defined the fighting techniques. There's some mm -hmm. other Taoist three principles and Shaolin three principles, which I would like to bring in our attention. So starting with the three Shaolin, they say, relax the, the, the upper body. So the upper body moves without any muscle contraction. Then the energy, the, the action, the movement comes from the spine and the waist. The all movement is generated from the turning of the spine, movement of the spine, as well as the waist. And the lower body, it produces the energy. It comes from the legs, from the very stability. And the Tai Chi first practice will be by learning how to breathe and relax, learning how to breathe and relax. You see the, the point of grab, the center of gravity will descend. You see most of, uh, if we, if I'm to go to the concept of yin and yang, which the white part is the energy, the, the dynamic of ourselves and the darker part, the black part, it's uh, relaxation, it's calm and stability. So they are equal. So that's how we should, we should conduct ourselves in a perfect harmony and in, in equilibrium, in balance. If I am balanced, I can stay in one toe, but I have to be very stable even in this position. So Tai Chi starts from a good stability, a good base controlling in, in many stances. There are many stances in Tai Chi. Coming from there, the, the mechanic, the movement will be generated by the waist and spine. And the, the upper body doesn't need to be contracted because as I said, it will, it will use the reactions of the opponent. The opponent come maybe with aggressivity. So his, re, his reactions are not fully controlled by the, by the mind, but he's not fully aware. He's just dominated by some feelings, by some, some as I said, reactions, emotions, not really thinking straight. So Tai Chi, it's actually a, a method of correcting him in a way to bringing him close to reality. And there I will say the, the three Taoist principles uh, uh, written by a Taoist scholar. So first one is uh, action without action. That means many changes, they, they, uh, they take place into, uh, <coughs> let's say into, Tai Chi practice that are not observed with bare eye. That means the breathing, the relaxation, the internal changes of the muscle, the internal changes of the body, body structure. It, it's, it's, not, it's not, it cannot be observed just by someone who is not familiar with this technique. The second one will be effort without effort. So the movement will be practiced many times beautifully until it, it arrives to be done effortless. And it will arise to be done effortless if we understand how our body works. Because each joint, if it's turned in a certain way, it locks or it opens the arm, let's say, or the arm that's connected with the spine and so on and so forth. And the third one, it's action without effort. That's, let's say, arriving to really be involved with Tai Chi, to really know Tai Chi. That means we are able to practice a routine. You know, in Tai Chi, there are routines as in Japanese martial arts called kata. And these routines, mm, yeah. we, we can perform it with minimum effort. We can perform it by setting the body into a kind of a circular movement and using the momentum to pass from one motion to the other without any stopping and then retaking, restarting the body, but the body would continue moving harmoniously with itself. And not only this, for a higher practice, we have to imagine that we are involved with someone that could be a training partner, that could be an opponent in a competition, that could be even an aggressor. And that's the same energy in between them. So we have to keep this calm, this relaxation through breathing and through mindfulness, as you are mentioning in, in Aikido. Yes, this I would I would uh, like to bring in uh, in our listeners' attention. Again, I see a lot of a lot of overlap, and the ideas that you meant the rotation through your hips that, that is that is the um, the tenkan principle in Aikido, 
the idea of relaxation and, and using your your chi, your energy, your your breathing again is also an overlap in in Aikido. So let's 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 look at Tai Chi and and um, and Tai and Aikido from a from a skill based point of view. How yeah. how would you present Tai Chi as a skill based martial art? What does one need? to practice Tai Chi? Is it forms? Is it technique? Is it repetition? How many repetitions? How many forms? Well, it's good that you brought the forms and repetition. Practicing many forms doesn't mean that someone will um, master the Tai Chi. Practicing one form, but very well and understanding all the principle, the mechanic, the the way we keep, we have to keep the mind in a meditation-like state, that will really bring benefits, that will really bring us closer to the true origin, to the, to the roots of Tai Chi. So as you mentioned, how many repetitions? I think many repetitions, <laughs> many repetitions, because Tai Chi is understanding, understanding the Tai Chi is through our own body, through experiencing it deeper and deeper. As we take it deeper, it can take us further. It's a paradox. It's, that's why I said that we go and we, we, we go Aikido, we go Tai Chi, and we, we, we are led to the same path of knowing ourselves as we better know ourselves, we, we know the world. So I should say many repetition. And of course, we have to be open to experience all the facets of Tai Chi, which are training with a partner, training by doing uh, routines, actions, uh, experiencing some weapons and then experience and learning the philosophy and furthermore we have we can contribute ourselves because in my in my vision everyone is different body and mind and spirit and then they should adapt tai chi to them and them to tai chi so it's a, a continuous process of learning and teaching in the same time taking and giving and this, I think it's, it's universal for all life, all life processes. So this helps us to bring Tai Chi into life and to bring life into Tai Chi. So we Tai-chi. change as philosophy of life, and then we're taking this further from the dojo or from the park. You see, many people, they just train Tai Chi close to nature in the park. So taking it from the park, from the fellows, partners of training and bringing to day-to-day life it helps us to to live in harmony and balance yes in in aikido from a skill-based point of view aikido can be very technical and complicated in all the attack combinations you can come up with, with at least ten thousand techniques ten thousand techniques that actually have a name and a logic in Aikido, which is a lot. But as you were saying, doesn't mean that if you know 10,000 techniques, you are the best at an art, but rather knowing the, the basis of all techniques is more important maybe than just knowing every single variation. Mm-hmm. Some, yes. techniques in, some techniques in Aikido have a cross between Aikido and other martial arts, since Aikido was a synthesis of the founder's understanding of art, the martial arts. So some techniques that you see in Judo, for example, or in Jiu-Jitsu are to be found in, in Aikido too. And since you mentioned the concept of training with a partner, in Aikido, we also have the concept of Uke and Tori. Uke is the person who attacks and is he is also the person who receives the technique done onto him and tori is the person who controls the uke and throws the uke away but in aikido we don't say he is my enemy or my competitor we actually call our training ukes as partners they are partners in of training. Of course, that's in Tai Chi. And to be a good uke, to be a good partner in training, you must reach a symbiosis and an understanding between yourself and, 
and the person that is doing the technique so that the, the, the goal of Aikido is also followed as like non-violence, non protecting each other and protecting from harm. So since there's no competition in Aikido, there is no need to, to have a, a display of force and a display of, of physical superiority. On the contrary, the higher the level in Aikido, the more fluid and the more fluent their moves are as opposed to the more strength is shown. But before one reaches even a minimum level of, of, of good technique in Aikido, one has to practice a lot of ukemi. Ukemi is called rolling and it's pretty mm -hmm. much the same roles or maybe a bit more different than you would see in judo and jujitsu. So if you start Aikido today, you will not learn some fancy technique. On the contrary, you will roll on the floor to make sure that you, you know how to engage your body with the surface of the mat or, or the ground. And another interesting thing that people sometimes mention, in Aikido, there are no kicks. We do not train kicking. We do not train kicking at you know, at a pad in on pads or anything. But what is very, very interesting and I think fascinating is that most Aikido techniques can be applied to kicks too. So usually in Aikido, you have an atemi with, with your hands or with your fist, not as much with your legs, but the same principles of Irimi going forward and taking the move and the momentum of it your opponent follow even if you have an opponent who is throwing kicks and punches. So from a skill point of view, I do believe that having a very strong basis is more important than knowing a thousand techniques and tricks, even in Aikido. Sure, sure, sure. You see, as I uh, as you were talking about the, the technicality of the martial art, I was thinking that um, Tai Chi has uh, some very characteristic techniques they can define, uh, and most of them they go to the same origin. As you said, the movement it can turn from one technique to another very easy. So we have to be aware how we turn the the hand. It can it can grab or it can neutralize the partner, immobilize in a different way. That's Tai Chi, as I said, speculating the reaction. And then, of course, it's very interesting, it's very captivating, all this fighting part, or this friendly fighting, as you said, it's a partner. It's not really someone that uh, we, we compete against. Not really, it's a harmony. I give something, he gives something. So. Taking the partner, you see, in, in Tai Chi, one of the very common methods is push hands. Push hands, it's uh, the partner pushes toward me, I deviate the movement and I push towards him. And then we speculate, you know, a little unbalance, a uh, little movement that's not coordinated, and we can push the partner out of the circle. Let's say how it happens into a competition line to show the skills. But this movement is done so friendly because the energy is exchanged. The chi, it unites together. And like in all this wealth being uh, therapy, so, you know, so at this point, Tai Chi can be turned into a therapy as well. It's a, it's a method mean of communication between people because we communicate non-verbal. And then mm -hmm. uh, all the other methods is how to keep the body. We keep the body in a certain way, and then during to the engaging into a situation in a certain way, and then it comes to a technique. Then we we change a little bit; it goes to another technique. Of course, in Tai Chi there are uh, many movements. There are five styles, so I'm not going to get into technical details because there's no point now in our discussion. I just want to say that. All in, in the style that I prefer, the roots of the Tai Chi, which is Chen style, all it comes to me from one basic movement, which is silk reeling. 
a circular movement of the arms. And then this, it may be seen as a movement of the hand or the arm, but it's actually an involvement of the shoulder. As the concentrates more to the body, as we get inner inside, that's why it's called also martial art, because Tai Chi is uses other parts of the body as a weapon. The whole body is a weapon. So the whole body is a weapon, getting into a close contact, entering like in Aikido, and then arriving to manipulate both of us, both of partners, and, and then neutralizing some attack or creating a harmony and correcting maybe a wrong movement with a wrong intention, if I meant to say. Yes. I think we've, we've covered the principles of Aikido and Tai Chi. We looked at some of the technical part, which for both of us, I think they're fascinating. But for people who are outside of the martial arts world and who would like to get into martial arts, what, what is the application of Aikido? What is the application of, of Tai Chi in real life? Wonderful let's, let's question. Yes, yes, of course. So as I said, Tai Chi, it's a method of learning how to use the body. It's like a user manual. You see our body, it's so complex. We can use it in many, many ways. And yet we don't know. We don't know, uh, like knowing ourselves, it's just a phrase because we do not know ourselves. Ourselves is a very complex thing. It's a universe. So Tai Chi, it introducts us, it's, it initiates us in how we use the body in a more efficient way. That's learning this, we're taking it to our daily life and we are more aware that a certain movement done in a certain way can harm us. So we'll avoid it. You see, I always recommend Tai Chi to people they practice sports. Sport injury is very common. If I am to follow the Tai Chi principles, I will avoid many injuries because I will know how to protect myself. So this is the benefit. And Tai Chi needs to be learned from the very basis, as you mentioned, relaxation, breathing. As we breathe well and we are relaxed, more unlikely we will be injured or hurt. And then taking further, being in balance. All movement has to be balanced. And then more, when we are very balanced and we can speed the movement, we can gain mobility. And then being mobile, being balanced, being relaxed, it's actually a, a kind of strength. We can raise our energy, our internal energy, the chi, and we can use it and direct it in a, in a very constructive way, in a beneficial way for us and for the people around us. So we can, we can generalize this idea of Tai Chi from a martial art to a uh, benefica. And the people who will get into martial arts, you see, I, I would think and I would say, getting to Tai Chi is not necessarily getting to know how to fight, but is getting to how I live my life as well-being on a path of wellness. And I will discover Tai Chi, I will discover Aikido, I will discover this wonderful arts that cultivate the body, that gives us new ways of using the body, and that we're gaining, let's say, we're gaining with physical stability, we gain also mental stability, we gain stability in many levels. And Tai Chi and Aikido, they are arts to be discovered by going towards wellness. It's not necessarily that people they get into fight, they might discover boxing or a Muay Thai or I don't know, karate. But Tai Chi and Aikido, they are hidden pearls. They are things that people, they want to get deeper into spirituality, they will discover that. That's how I think, that's their connection with the, the martial art world, I would say. <laughs>